Hi guys, it's Clarice and welcome to another video tutorial with me. It is actually February now, so February 1st, and for this video I am still going to be using the uh, Zen Art Brushes. Uh, and then this time we are going to be teaming them up with these Etcher Graphic Pens. And for colors we are continuing to use the White Knights, which I greatly love. And then for our paper, this is the Stonehenge 300 GSM. Uh, really quickly before I begin, if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. If you like this video, please hit the like button, as I do a lot of watercolor videos like this. And uh, So for today, I am going to do a nice, loose, simple video where we're going to be doing some loose florals and then having uh, loose abstract florals-ish and then we're going to be adding a little bit of graphic pen detail on there to kind of make it pop, all right? So I am using the two flat brushes that come in the Black Tulip collection uh, from the Zen Art um, brushes. And then I'm also using the number eight and we are going to be using the Rigger, okay? And then for the pens, I have 03 and 06 two different, different thicknesses. Um, and then for colors, I'm gonna start off by using some of the, some of the, I know I wanna use some raw sienna, let me just show you that. I know I definitely wanna use some raw sienna. We're gonna nicely offset that with some nice bright ruby and also possibly some purples with a little bit of the cerulean blue. So. So I'm going to mix a little bit off my ruby and just put it on here. This is using the larger flat brush, which is 3 4th. And then I am going to take the smaller one, which is the number 8. And I am going to mix some of the carmen. And I'll just get some of that on here. And then I'm just gonna get some of the violet and get some of that over here. So we've got some really nice bright colors happening. Okay, so uh, after the violet, we're also getting some of the cerulean. So I wanna get that cerulean on here. I didn't wash this brush, that's why it's looking that purpley, but I do wanna mix that cerulean it with some purple. So I'm just going to wash off most of the violet and mix more cerulean in here. So we get a purpley kind of lighter shade that can go nicely with the dark purple that we have. The violet, rather. There we go, nice blues. And then we also get some here. Let's get some of the Carmen, Carmine, Carmen, Carmine. There we go. So we've got some nice color happening. We do also want to get some of the raw sienna. So I'm just going to quickly do that over here. Some nice lighter, sorry, more natural looking hues happening for our composition. So we're going to start off with doing these first, this first flower very much so like the uh, flat brush flowers that I did uh, about two weeks ago I believe. So if you've not watched that video please go ahead and watch that or you can just give your give a try give this a try and see if it works or doesn't first thing i'm going to do is also take the a uh, number 10 and i just because i've got color on my flat brushes already i just want to quickly dampen this area it's okay if the brush has a little bit of a tint of another color so you can see it's like a light pink that i have happening here but I just want to quickly dampen it very roughly. And it's fine if I'm leaving some spaces that are dry. 
Okay, and now I'm going to go in with this brush and we're going to start our first floral. So first thing I'm going to do is one stroke. So I'm going to face this floral upward. I'm going to do one stroke this way. Look at that beautiful color. Another one this way. Another one this way. One down under. Another this way. And I'm just going to give this back petal some extra little strokes so it sits better. Getting more color, I'm just going to go over these guys a little bit. Really press down here to get like this nice organic shape so it looks like the petal is falling falling backward, kind of. Trying to get some nice white spaces in there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take this brush, I'm going to get some of my carmine, and I'm just going to add some carmine to the edges of this and just enhance it. So this flower looks like a nice two-tone floral. And then while this is damp, I'm going to go ahead and quickly get some of the washing off my number eight. And I'm quickly getting some of my raw sienna, which is on the side. And I'm going to quickly do the same thing here on a smaller scale. Now if you feel that raw sienna is too light because it is a lighter color, just go ahead and get some color directly from the color cake, which is right here. Just shift this over slightly. There we go. Look at that beautiful, beautiful spread. You see that? Now I want all these kind of florals just blending in together. So that's why I'm putting them so close. But this one is our main floral. So now I'm gonna go in and get some of the other colors we mixed up. I'll get some of the blue, yes. The cerulean that I mixed with some of the violet and I'll do that flower coming this way. So facing downward. Let's move this away, you don't really need to see that. So I'm just like, Really, my strokes are very loose, and I am trying to leave space, and this flower is literally just going to be facing downward. I'm gonna take some of that purple next and just add it over on top. Just adding a couple of lines here and there, trying to make it seem like it is more of a shadow on this flower than anything else. Then washing off most of the color, I wanna go back and get some of that blue and just lightly kind of add some background detail and make it seem like it's background petals to this flower. And so we're pretty much almost done our base for these guys. Okay, so it's like this nice, beautiful array. Um, the next thing I wanna do is get Using the, using the number eight round, I'm gonna get some of the, let's get some of this guy right here, this purple, and I'm going to add some very rough strokes at the top here, spreading, like pressing down on the belly of my brush to get these shapes here. I'm trying to make these more like background flowers, which are secondary flowers to our primary three. So I'm pressing down and just getting some very loose looking shapes. And then you can even mix that up with some of the blue that we mixed. Get that in there so we can get some nice two tones happening. Some differentiation with the flowers and the petals. And I'm just trying to get it to fade off a bit with the blend that we have there. I'll just do some over here at the bottom too. Notice how I am just kind of pressing down and very lightly relying on the fact that the water is, the watercolor is doing its thing. And uh, I'm trying to just allow the colors to blend and look natural. 
just do a couple more here. So alternate between the two colors that we've mixed because they will kind of complement each other well. So I've done some at the top, done some here at the bottom. Then I'm just dipping the tip of my brush in water to get like a very lighter version of what I just did up here. And that's good. Fabulous. Um, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get some more of this one right here, which is the ruby. And I just want to do a little bit more of the ruby. Just like peeking out from here. So I'm trying to like gauge to see where I need this color spreading out and I feel like I need some here. So that's why I did some over there. Now I'm just gonna dip the tip of the brush in water, get some of the carmine and I'll just do like some lighter strokes here. Again, dipping the tip of my brush in water to get a much lighter pink. Allow this to kind of flow in as you can see here. Just doing some loose little strokes there. And now let's, uh, before this dries up completely, we're gonna do another little set over this or a layer. So I'm going back to the larger brush. I'm going to get some of that ruby and I wanna just quickly go over one, two, That's it, okay? Do that, and then I wanna do the carmine really quickly. So this is pretty much like the wet on wet. Okay, so that's that. I really want some of this to stand out some more. So I'm gonna get some of the carmine, mix it up with this purple a little bit to get this kind of purple. And using this brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and allow this to kind of, this brush to kind of do its thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and add these strokes. Okay, so just like that, we've got a little bit of blending in there. Um, I don't like how it's blending too well, so I'm just going to take that off by just taking the brush and just going over there. Now we're going to go in and get some of the number, get the number eight, and I want to get a little bit more of the raw sienna, and I want to add that in here just to kind of blend it into the ruby carmine that we have and then again I think I definitely want to get some happening just like loosely strokes happening here and I don't want to get it all over so I'm going to end it there and just allow this center to kind of be more of a defining point so that when we get in with our um, with our um, graphic pens we can give some more definition to this okay all right so that's that I wanted to also do a little bit of layering to that guy at the top but nothing too intense. So I'm using the number eight and I'm going to get some of the, some of this color, but I wanna get some of that carmine and mix it in just to 
get that color and then I'm just very lightly doing this. You want to push all the color down to the bottom of the flower and then just lightly touching those guys that we have at the top. So you can see how the overlay of color really adds something pretty to it. And that's the whole point of something that's um, artsy, abstract looking like this. We want the colors to speak for itself, not so much by the detail, but the mixing of the colors need to be the stop factor when it comes to this kind of artwork. So I'm just trying to highlight certain areas. So you can see it's kind of coming along really nicely the more layers you add. I'm just going to do one last thing, these guys right here. And for that, I'm just going to get some of the carmine I know we used the ruby, but I'm going to use the carmine for these guys just to kind of have it stand out a tad bit compared to the rest. Perfect. Um, let's add a little bit of that on here. It's going to transition as more of a light pink, which I don't mind. And then we can move on to doing a little bit of the leaves. So for the leaves, I'm going to use a combination of the emerald. And I am going to mix it in with some of the Mars brown. So we get that nice wooded green. Just like that. Um, Yes, because I want this green to be darker and then it'll make the rest of the bright florals stand out if we've got a nice dark green. So that's why I am mixing extra of the um, Mars Brown into the raw sienna. Okay, all right. So using my rigger, I'm just going to go ahead and lightly take advantage of the fact that a lot of this is still very much so damp. And so I want to go ahead and add strokes in there of a nice loose nature. I'm trying to push all the main color down to the bottoms where the flowers meet. Adding some at the bottom of these florals. Some kind of trickling downward so that it looks like there's leaves coming outward this way, some attaching. And then what I'm gonna do is just using the tip of my brush, just kind of drag and create very loose organic shaped leaves. I love the rigor for things like this because it really does give me some nice um, organic looking uh, results. So I'm literally just trying to draw these in and color them, paint them in using my, my rigor here. Mixing more color. I'm going to go ahead and do more of these guys in all locations really. Taking advantage again of the fact that things are still damp and just pressing down and trailing this brush. Allowing this brush to trail off we get some nice little um, dry edges here but you can see how it's nice and dark at the the beginning point between the flowers that's what we want to do so just keep on adding you can add a couple more um, swabs or dabs of color in there just getting some more color as we go along just going to add some green in here while this is still damp too 
And then it's good to kind of add the green here and there. This will really make, in between the flowers, this will really make your florals jump out and pop more. We're gonna go ahead and add some green up here. And what you wanna do is like use the tip of your brush and try and snake it around and then draw the rest in. Allow it to give you this nice beautiful shape which is organic and fun. So we're just gonna go ahead and add some leaves all over the place. Now this is also very much so something very subjective, like so I encourage you to kind of use your judgment where you feel it's necessary to add these leaves. You've kind of started off with the base foundation of like where I've placed my flowers. Um, so use, so the rest of it, I think you should just kind of decide for yourself where you want it. So what I'm gonna do is make this a time lapse and I'll be right back. All right, so this is what we've ended up with. And now we are ready to go ahead and add some nice graphic detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is we need to make sure that most of it is dry so it's not going to ruin, get ruined once we add the ink. But uh, I think most of it is dry. So I'm gonna start off with this guy here. And here's what we're gonna do to add uh, some graphic detail. So the first thing I wanna do is, this is the tinier brush. So I'm gonna use the other one, number six. And here's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the center first. And we're gonna go ahead and add these little lines. All around, and then we're gonna add tiny little circles or dots or maybe a mixture of both really mainly in this area and it needs to be sporadic so like some areas can be concentrated and dense and then the other areas can be lighter so that's good enough and you can already see how it's making your flower pop. So we're gonna do the same thing over on this flower here. Maybe slightly larger compared to the yellow one. And then just like a lot more dotted and tinier at the bottom. And then maybe just like lighted, light, lighted, lighter looking dots kind of trailing off at the bottom. Okay, so that's how that looks. We're going to go, let's see, just add some detail here. Just see where your uh, ink kind of dried up. So what I'm doing is making it seem like the darker purple is the petal over this so you cannot see these guys because it's being covered. And then just some peeping from the top. Perfect. And leave that as is. Uh, let's do a little bit more here. I think I like the um, 
I like when some are circles with color, well, without being colored inside, and then the others are just like, they look like dots because they're colored inside. I think it gives a nice separation and a little bit more texture. So love how this looks so far. Uh, we're just going to add a little more detail in terms of leaves. So, um, so in terms of leaves, what I would suggest is you can absolutely go ahead and add some leaves. Um, let's do some coming from the bottom here. So if we just do a couple like this, stems coming out this way, and it is okay to kind of have them overlapping over onto the flowers. I will leave that up to you guys to see like how you want to do your leaves. This is how I'm doing mine, just the very basic leaves. So I'm just having some stems happening and then drawing the leaves on there. And I'm making them on a smaller scale too, so they're not too overpowering. I'm going to do some over here. Perfect. And so we've got some here, we've got some here. Let's do some at the top. I'm going to turn this around just in case anything is still damp. So I said some at the top, so let's do it coming out from here. Great. Um, now this is kind of a little bit tough because I know it's fading off and it looks like it's just hanging over there. So I'm just going to have this go down here, do another little sprig here overlapping on the flower. So then it doesn't look abrupt. How's that? Think that's okay we can actually have some kind of coming out this way I think it would be nice and yeah I think this is okay so we've got three locations of that perfect I don't think we need to do any more leaves unless you feel like you would like to I think that's more for preference and very subjective so what I would do is just add a tiny more detail to some of the flower petals here. So for instance, these are our main flowers. I'm going to add some outline to some of these petals that we've got going on. So I'm kind of roughly using the darker hues to determine where the petals start and where they end. But I'm also kind of going a little bit outside the edge to kind of give it that very like illustrative kind of look. And now what I'm going to do is just draw lines. And as you can see, my lines are not straight. They're kind of almost going around the petals, if that makes any sense, in a curvy shape to kind of make it seem like the petals are curved. An illusion. And also, the uh, there's a couple of gaps in between the lines, so they're not completely... 
all connected. And the spacing doesn't have to be even either. So, some of the lines are also slightly wavy, which again, I think really adds something nice to the whole image. Okay, so we've got this. I'm not going to do any for the red. I was planning to do some for this guy, but I'm really liking how this turned out. So let's just do the one for the top here, and then we're gonna decide. So this is how I'm kind of going all around. Actually, this is where we should have switched our pens and gone to the thinner one using the thicker one for the outlines and then the thinner one for the lines. Now, I was kind of grazing with the other brush to begin with anyways, which is why we got some really nice thins, but I remembered this halfway, so here's me using the second brush. Completely forgot, but that happens. So I'm doing the exact same thing that I did for the other one. Just continuing on to this right here. All right, so instead of watching me do this repetitive motion, what I'm gonna do is again, I will make this a time lapse. And so I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so here's where we're at. Um, I left that blank just because I liked the option, or sorry, I liked how it looked um, kind of more open, I guess, with room to breathe if you kind of alternate it. I ended up doing this one here. I probably should have left it because this one had this happening. It was nice to kind of just have two, but that's okay. Um, I really liked the idea of adding a couple of berries in the black. So that's what I'm going to do. But what I will do is kind of add those berry elements over here. So I know initially I said these were more like flowers, but we're gonna give them a little more shape. And we're probably going to give them some alternating patterns. So I'm kind of, I've outlined them. And then I'm going to outline these guys here. And I've just added a tiny dot over there at the top. Now I think these can be more like the berries. The ones at the bottom still look very much so like flowers. So this is the thinner one. I wanna get this, the lines in this to be a lot thicker. So I'm gonna use the thicker brush and just Do this. So I've literally made them like pods almost. Now this one I'm a little bit apprehensive of doing it over here just because it's so close to the flower. But notice that I'm doing the lines a lot closer to make this look a lot darker in comparison to the flower below it. So the lines are a lot closer. So you can see it really does stand out way more in comparison to that. 
Now these guys at the bottom, I'm a little bit stumped because I know they're not quite the shape at the top and they do look like flowers. So what I will do is I'm going to kind of add a little bit of detail by doing the linear lines or the not linear, the kind of edging lines all around. But I'm going to make them like those bell flowers instead. So I'm going to give them that. Just like that. Okay, so then they're going to have the lines just here and there. In fact, for these ones at the bottom here, I'm just going to keep it very less detailed in terms of the lines. So I'm just kind of spacing out these lines and then just adding a little bit to the sides to make it look like it's shadow. Um, it's more like shading there. Then give the insides some little dots and circles to make it really stand out. Some on the outside. Don't ask me what kind of flowers these are. I am not sure. We are literally doing abstract loose florals here. And almost done. Okay, there we go. That is it. So this is what we've ended up with. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you thought. Hit that like button if you liked how this turned out. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you do end up trying this, please send me your work on Instagram and Facebook. I would love to see how it's turned out. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching.